Um, it's, it's a pleasure to introduce the second speaker of the morning, who is uh, Christoph uh, Fracek, who will talk about recurrence for smooth curves in the moduli space of translation surfaces. Thank you very much. So my talk is a kind of overview and advertising to a topic. First, I should mention that uh, the results which I will present during my talk uh, are effects of collaboration with many people, with uh, Barak Weiss, Corina Ulchigrai, Martin Schmoll, Longangshi, and Veret Romkedar. In fact, Barak Weiss is not a formal co-author of any uh, joint paper, but in fact, he is and was, was and is uh, Spiritus Movens was the topic and uh, also some collaborations uh, in this subject. So the main object of our study are smooth curves in the moduli space of translation surfaces and uh, typical Teichmiller behavior uh, of the Teichmiller orbit starting from elements of the curve. And first of all, I should uh, introduce some basic notions. The first notion is translation surface, translation surfaces. Fortunately, thanks to yesterday's uh, talk by Mark, my, my task here is much more, much more easier because Mark prepared a lot of uh, good uh, pictures. I, my definition of translation surface is uh, unfortunately um, very formal, but I need uh, this formality. So a translation surface for me, it's a compact connected orientable uh, topological surface together with a finite set uh, of singular points denoted uh, by capital sigma and an atlas of charts, charts which avoid uh, singular points and uh, every transition map in uh, this uh, atlas is a translation. And more formally, or more precisely, it means that for every connected component of uh, any such uh, intersection, there is a unique uh, complex uh, number. Uh, and this complex number uh, gives uh, the displacement between local coordinates uh, between uh, given by one chart and the other charts uh, covering C. And uh, the points which are not singular uh, already are called uh, regular. And for every regular, uh, on the set of regular points and for every direction, uh, we can define uh, a tangent vector field in the direction theta. And this is the pullback of the unit constant vector in the direction theta on the complex plane. Of course, this pullback is given by charts of the atlas. And since the derivative of any transition map is the identity, everything is well defined. Uh, so we have a uh, tangent uh, vector field on the set of regular points. So uh, we can uh, define the corresponding local flow. And this corresponding local flow it's, uh, it, it's called uh, the translation flow on the translation surface in direction theta and in local coordinates, it looks like usual translation in the direction theta. And uh, the possibility of defining such flows uh, is the source of the name uh, translation surfaces uh, in, 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 in this theory. And this flow, uh, it's a nice uh, flow which uh, preserves um, the Lebesgue measure, which is the pullback of the Lebesgue measure uh, on the complex plane. And we uh, will distinguish the vertical, the vertical flow. This vertical flow is in direction E over two. And this is a formal definition. 
but less formal in the flavor presented by Mark, compact translation surfaces, in fact, are resulting surface after gluing of the correspondent parallel sides of any compact uh, polygon, but special polygons for which sides are partitioned into pairs of parallel sides of the same length, which we glue together. Uh, an example of such a guy we see here. Uh, in this, for this picture, uh, every corner corresponds to a singular point for the, in, in, in the translation surface and the, 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 the translation atlas in fact here uh, is inherited from the from the complex plane and uh, every translation surface has a polygonal representation but this representation is not unique Probably, for example you can cut off an the triangle and glue it to the uh, other side and we will obtain another, another polygon which gives the same surface. And this uh, polygonal representation allows us to uh, understand uh, so-called moduli space of translation surfaces. We can treat this space, this moduli space, of the quotient space of the space of all such polygons when we identify two polygons uh, such that one of them can be obtained by the other through a chain of uh, cutting and pasting uh, procedure uh, described a minute ago. And uh, uh, the other uh, advantage of this representation is that it's easy to understand why the moduli space has a natural uh, uh, structure of, uh, of, of, of the manifold. So in fact, local coordinates uh, are given by the positions of, 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 of corners of the polygon. In fact, uh, the moduli space formally is um, complex or bifold. And on this complex orbifold, we have a natural SL2R action. And this SL2R action is given by linear transformations uh, of polygons. And we start from a polygon. We transform uh, easily by, 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 by a metric. And uh, of course, uh, pairs of parallel sites, uh, which have the same uh, lengths uh, maintain. And uh, we obtain another polygon which we can glue together all the pairs and we obtain another, another translation surface. And there are two extremely important sub-actions. The first one, the Teichmiller space, which is given by the sub-action of diagonal uh, matrices and the other by rotation. And during my... Uh, talk, I will care about unique ergodicity of translation uh, uh, flows. Uh, let me recall what does it mean. This is a general definition of unique ergodicity. Sometimes people uh, call it uh, equidistribution of all orbits. And the, the formal definition is that um, there exists uh, a and an invariant uh, Borel uh, measure, probability Borel measure, such that uh, Bilkov's, uh, Bilkov's ergodic theorem holds for every continuous function and every starting point. More geometrically, equivalently, uh, it means that for any Borel subset with small boundary, uh, the frequencies of any semi-orbit of the flow tend to the measure of our Borel subset. And uh, uh, informally, it means that every 
sub uh, semi orbit is equi distributed along the whole space um, according to the law given by the measure mu. The last equivalent definition is that uh, the flow has only one probability invariant measure. And there is a beautiful uh, uh, result, classical beautiful result by Maser, uh, which intertwines uh, uh, the, the Teichmiller dynamics and translation uh, dynamics. And it says that if we start from a surface and uh, the Teichmiller semi orbit starting from the surface is recurrent. I, I didn't say that, but the moduli space is an uh, orbifold which is not compact. And recurrence means that uh, semi orbit returns infinitely many times to a compact subset. In this situation, uh, we have unique ergodicity of the vertical flow on the starting surface. And let's use this result in a very trivial way. Let's consider an SL2 invariant ergodic probability measure on the moduli space, nu, by Eskin Milzakhani Muhammadi result. This measure is supported on so-called on so-called affine manifold, which we denote by M. And uh, uh, additionally, uh, the measure nu is also ergodic with respect to the Teichmiller uh, subaction. And uh, we can use Bilkov's ergodic theorem to this uh, Teichmiller flow to obtain, to obtain uh, equidistribution of the positive uh, Teichmiller semi orbits starting from almost every uh, point uh, in uh, the sub manifold M. Of course, every uh, equidistributed sub orbit is recurrent. Uh, if a semi orbit is recurrent, then by measure result, we obtain unique ergodicity. Of the, of the vertical flow for almost every uh, surface on N. So it's a well-known result, uh, but I, 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 I wanted to, 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 to say about it because our main uh, interest, it's related in a sense uh, with this result, but we would like to uh, have much more. So we, our aim is to consider some curves, smooth curves in the moduli space N. And now, because it's a one-dimensional sub-manifold, we ask about unique ergodicity, recurrence of the Teichmiller semi-orbit of uh, equidistribution of semi-orbits uh, for almost every surfaces, but not starting from the whole um, sub, uh, sub, sub, sub manifold N, but we care only about elements of a curve. Of course, these three meta questions are related. Three implies two, two implies one, but uh, nevertheless, all of them are interested uh, alone also. And the first result, this is not our result. Uh, this is result by Chaika Eskin, uh, says about such curves, but they consider very particular curves, two, two, two types. And uh, the first type uh, is created by uh, the rotations of an uh, starting uh, surface. So we have a surface and we start to rotate the surface. Of course, we obtain a curve in the moduli space this, this, this way. 
the other type is given by horocyclic arcs uh, emanated from an uh, surface. And for these two uh, kinds of, of, of uh, curves, uh, Chaika and Eskin proved that for almost every starting surface from each such curve, uh, the positive semi-orbit, technical semi-orbit, is equidistributed uh, in the uh, moduli space. And where n, in fact, is the SL2R orbit closure uh, of, 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 of this starting element. This is a beautiful result with many, many applications. But fortunately, this result does not solve all problems in, uh, uh, in, 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 in uh, translation surfaces. I will present some of them which needs different approach. Uh, ah, I, now I, I should mention that I will not give general uh, uh, answer to, to, to these three questions. I will restrict uh, my attention only to some special uh, cases. But nevertheless, these cases will have some application. And the first situation, the first restriction is to the moduli space of so-called uh, branch double covers of uh, a translation tori. This kind of, 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 of um, translation surfaces appears, uh, appeared uh, yesterday during the, the the talk by 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 Mark and uh, uh, his his tale uh, was used exactly to describe dynamics on, on such kind of of, um, of guys and uh, every such cover arises uh, from from two identical tori which are glued along the same slit. And this space of such covers uh, can, be the, can be identified with the homogeneous space of this form. So this is uh, the semi-direct product of SL to R and R, and this lattice is uh, an uh, integer lattice. And in fact, this part, SL to R, is responsible for the shape of the torus. And this part, R2, it's responsible for the shape of the slit, more or less. And uh, we should understand well also how to, how to understand the Teichmiller flow in this situation. And it is given by the left multiplication by this diagonal tablet. So in this situation, we can pass to homogeneous dynamics and we can use very powerful tools of this homogeneous dynamics, and we use them to produce a criterion for, for equidistribution uh, for curves uh, which live in, this, uh, in, 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 in the space of uh, double uh, branch to double covers uh, of Tore. Uh, OK, so we consider and a uh, smooth curve uh, or, 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 or in, this, in the space of, uh, in the direct, semi-direct uh, product. And we assume uh, that this guy satisfies a non-degeneration non non uh, condition, which is expressed in the language of non-vanishing of the Bronskian of the first row uh, of, 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 of our curve. And uh, finally, we assume that this Bronskian is non-zero for almost every parameter. And in this situation, if we take any translation of this curve in the homogeneous space here, gamma, it's any 
lattice uh, in, 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 this, in this group, uh, then every such translated uh, curve, uh, it's good. It's good. It means that almost every point from this curve is equidistributed by the forward Teichmuller flow. And I don't want to say anything about the proof, which is really complicated. I would like to say about applications, three applications of this result. The first application is related to the behavior of light rays in periodic patterns of Eton lenses. Uh, one Eton lens is a round lens such that uh, the direction of the uh, light motion is reversed af after passing through the lens. And this uh, property does not depend on the, on the direction of attack. Uh, this is a real object, so it's easy to, to, to describe, to describe um, so-called refractive index of this lens at every point. To, 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 to obtain such, um, such uh, property. And uh, Jens Marklov, some times ago, proposed to study uh, dynamical behavior of light rates in, um, in uh, periodic patterns of identical Eton lenses. Of course, this periodicity uh, of, of, of the pattern is given by, by a lattice in R. And the main, our result, which is, uh, which is a, not, this is not colorary, but, but, but we use the previous, the, previous, um, the previous result about equidistribution, is the following. It says that for any such pattern, uh, for almost every starting direction, every light ray, the whole light ray, uh, is uh, trapped in an infinite band. Of course, if you start from different points, uh, the, the band is, is, is different, but all of them have the same width and the same direction which is independent over or, 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 or independent on, on uh, the starting point, it depends only the direction of the starting motion. And to be honest, this direction has nothing in common in the starting direction, but uh, I, I don't want to say more about it. Okay, uh, there are two next applications, but I, I, I will say on, only uh, shortly about them. I will come back uh, to the first, uh, to, the, to the second, or first on this slide uh, in, 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 uh, in a moment. Uh, okay, the second application is for unique ergodicity of the billiard flow inside uh, an ellipse with one vertical obstacle of this form. So the picture is like uh, here. And, and as I said, I will, uh, I will come back to, to this uh, subject, but in a more, more general uh, context. The last application is for, it's in a number theory to understand uh, a gap distribution of the sequence of fractional parts of screw, <laughs> square roots of natural numbers. This sequence is equidistributed uh, on the uh, unit interval. And Elkis McMullen proved a beautiful result about gap distribution. But we, we attack this problem in a little bit different way. So we started from any point on the interval and we were in we were interested in uh, the distribution of the consecutive gaps which uh, rounds our number s and 
for almost every S, we proved some uh, kind of gap distribution uh, of this form. That's it. Probably I don't see it. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so now we had one result, one, one criterion on equity distribution, but uh, this uh, result was really restricted to a, a submoduli space of double covers. One we would like to pass through this, uh, this, this, this uh, moduli space, and two, to pass to a little bit more general situation, we need to change also methods. So homogeneous dynamics in more general situation, it's, it's, it's not enough to, 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 to help us. And in more general situation, we used uh, a very nice result by Minsky and Weiss about about unique ergodicity uh, for curves of interval translation. Uh, inter sorry, for interval exchange transformation. Uh, as you probably know, an interval exchange transformation uh, is uh, determined by two 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 uh, things. Uh, one is uh, uh, the vector of lenses of exchanged intervals, and the, the other is the permutation governing this arrangement. And let's uh, fix uh, this permutation, and let's us consider a curve of IETs, uh, which is determined by a curve of a uh, vector of lenses. And what is our aim? Our aim is to find a condition under which almost every element of this curve is uniquely ergodic. And to, to express uh, the, the, the Minsky Weiss result, uh, for every S and J uh, denoted by B, J, and T, J, the right end of the uh, J's interval before and after exchange. Then uh, the translation of the J's interval is given by this displacement. And this displacement is next used to define the function LS and this is this is given by the derivative uh, with respect to the parameter s. This function is piecewise constant because this displacement, of course, is also piecewise constant. And uh, the main result by 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 Minsky and Weiss, or corollary from their result, is the following: that uh, suppose that for almost every parameter, our interval exchange transformations have no connections. Connection is a, a orbit, is an orbit joining uh, two discontinuity points on the end or the ends of, 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 of intervals. And moreover, we assume that the function L is non-negative and non-zero. Then for almost every parameter S, we have unique ergodicity of the interval exchange transformation. And our aim is to translate this result to translation surfaces. And okay, and now unfortunately I, to, I have to I have to introduce a uh, few notions uh, which I, which I quite clear, but uh, complicated in the formal definition. First of, 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 of them uh, is a partition of a surface into polygons. 
uh, partition into polygons is a finite family of closed, connected, and simply connected subsets called, uh, called polygons, such as that. Uh, for every polygon, if we remove singular point from the polygon, it's covered by a chart uh, in the uh, flat atlas. And this chart can be continuously extended to cover the whole polygon. And the image of the this tail is a real, oh, sorry, com real, com <laughs> real polygon in the complex plane. And we assume additionally that every singular point point is a corner of a polygon. Uh, moreover, we assume that uh, an intersection of two tiles of, of two, two polygons is the union of uh, common uh, sides or, or, or vertices. And we assume also that all of them cover uh, our surface. So it's a quite natural definition of partition uh, our surface into polygon. Uh, some examples will appear uh, in a minute. And now let's consider a smooth curve uh, of, uh, of, of, of translation surfaces. And now suppose that every translation surface is have a partition into polygons. And moreover, we assume that all these partitions are parameterized by the same finite set. And um, the sides of, uh, of, of, of polygons are not vertical. And the most important assumption says that uh, local coordinates of polygons uh, vary in a smooth way with S changing. Okay, each such object we will call a curve of uh, partitions. And for any such curve of partitions, we define three uh, finite uh, families of complex valued functions. B, E, and D. B like the beginning, E like the end, D like differences. And in the first, we take any corner of a polygon. Okay, we have a polygon. And we take any corner which emanates a vertical segment upward inside this polygon. In this situation, we calculate local coordinates of this guy. Then we obtain a function assigning minus these local coordinates. And we add this, all these functions to the first family B. In the second, uh, uh, to define the second family, we consider all corners which emanates um, a vertical segments uh, downward. And we do more or less the same, but we attach here not minus, but uh, just local coordinates. And the, the, the source family is a little bit different. We consider common sites. And this is alpha, this is beta. So suppose that every uh, vertical upward orbit pass, uh, passing uh, through S uh, passes uh, from alpha to beta polygon. Then we consider the, oh, sorry. Oh. No. The following class of functions. Here you see the displacement between local coordinates 
coming from this polygon and that polygon for all guys from the common site. Of course, uh, because of the definition of translation surface, it does not depend on the, on the point on this side. Okay, it's horrible, I know. But the, the next result is even more horrible. This is the main, uh, this is the main technical uh, criterion. And uh, to, 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 to present this technical criterion, I need uh, two more ingredients. One of them is the following uh, anti-symmetric bracket. And the last one is so-called reference function. And oh, in this horrible <laughs> theorem, we have two assumptions. And the first assumption, which is the most horrible, uh, says more or less uh, that um, functions from B, E, and D are in a sense rationally independent. More formally, we consider an uh, integer uh, combination of this form, which is non-zero. Then we assume that the real part of this combination is non-zero, but at almost every uh, point. And this horrible assumption is responsible for the absence of uh, so-called vertical saddle connections. Uh, vertical saddle connections uh, were fortunately defined by, by Mark. Uh, vertical saddle connection is an orbit, vertical orbit uh, which, uh, jo which joins two singular points. And the absence of such uh, subtle connections implies the absence of connections in uh, minsky weiss result. Uh, the second uh, assumption has two versions, uh, positive and negative. This negative we, we, we ignore. This positive one, uh, I, I should say only that it's responsible for the positivity of the function LS in the minsky weiss theorem. And maybe I should recall. So you see here, here there are two important assumptions, the absence of connections and positivity of the function L. And both our assumptions are related to, 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 to two of them. OK, and under this assumption, almost every uh, for almost every surface on our curve, its forward semi-orbit is recurrent, which implies that the vertical flow on, uh, on, on, on uh, uh, almost every our starting surface is um, uniquely ergodic by major result. Fortunately, this result has uh, a nicer browser. Uh, in, the, um, in the family of specific curves, curves which are partitioned uh, into staircase polygons. Staircase polygons in general uh, can have uh, such uh, four forms. And if we consider a uh, curve of surfaces uh, tailed by such uh, staircase tails, uh, then we should consider two families of real valued, real valued uh, functions, um, xp and uh, uh, yp. And in the first one, we collect all the lengths. And in the second, or heights, of uh, staircase steps when the parameter s vary. So it's easy to understand what's, what it is. And okay, you should say, wait a minute, here, these guys have vertical sides. So it's forbidden from the point of view of, of your definition in a moment, but now we will change uh, the direction of the motion until now we consider vertical direction, now we pass to the direction uh, P over four. And this picture, in fact, we have to 
rotate by P fours, and then we can uh, apply our previous result. And finally, we obtain a criterion for unique ergodicity, but for uh, translation flows in direction P fours. And here, this guy is a little bit nicer because the first assumption uh, is expressed, um, expresses in fact, in an easier way, uh, the, invari uh, the independence, rational independence uh, mentioned earlier. Here, this independence is formulated in the uh, language of uh, non-vanishing of the Vronskian for this uh, three guys together and there is uh, all and this 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 assumption is responsible for the first assumption in the previous result and uh, there is another assumption which is responsible for the second assumption in the previous result and now as you see here we have to count uh, the bracket between elements from the first and the second family with the reference function L and we, we compare uh, them to zero. And finally, if a surface, um, if, if a curve satisfies these two assumption, we have unique ergodicity for almost every uh, surface and uh, for the direction P force. And this result have two independent applications. One is related to uh, billiard flows inside um, an ellipse. So let's consider an ellipse given by this, the following formula given by these two uh, parameters, A and B. And this is, uh, this is uh, not hard. This is, uh, a, a, in fact, a school a problem uh, to show that every uh, billiard orbit is tangent to a confocal conic. This conic has uh, it, 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 it's uh, determined by the following formula. So if uh, if the parameter S is between zero and B, then this conic is an ellipse like in this picture. And if S is between uh, B and A, then the, our conic CS is uh, a hyperbola. So it means that the phase space of our billiard splits into invariant sets uh, denoted here by SS parameterized by uh, caustic conics. And more to, 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 to better understanding the dynamics of the restricted billiard flow on this, on this level set SS, we have to use a smart change coordinate and which I don't want to describe. And after this change uh, of coordinates, every such restricted billiard flow on SS is isomorphic to the linear uh, flow on the standard torus with the slope given by the ratio of such elliptic integrals. Of course, if this ratio is irrational, then we see unique ergodicity. If it is irrational, then we see uh, periodicity. And since uh, the map tau is piecewise continuous and piecewise monotonic. We obtain, for example, that almost every tau s is irrational. So oh, for almost every s, the restricted uh, billiard flow on SS is unique or uniquely ergodic. But uh, this is not the main uh, result here. We pass to a little bit more complicated situation. When our elliptic billiard is nibbled by two monsters, one attacks from the right, one attacks from the left, and both monsters uh, have uh, teeth uh, which shapes uh, are elliptical, hyperbolic, and confocal to our original ellipse. 
more formally, it means that if we consider any quadrant, this quadrant is uh, bounded by a chain of uh, elliptical and hyperbolic arcs. And uh, this chain looks like uh, stars with elliptic hyperbolic steps. This, uh, uh, this, this, this uh, family of uh, billiards, uh, so-called uh, quasi-integrable, uh, were introduced by Dragovich and Radnovich, and they observed that uh, for such shapes of billiards, we see the same, uh, the same behavior as for the usual uh, whole ellipse. So we, so we have the same splitting of the phase space into subspaces, uh, collecting all orbits which are uh, which are tangent to the same confocal or uh, confocal conic. And uh, so here you have you see uh, three examples of 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 uh, different situations of, of, of uh, the shape of, of the billiard uh, orbit. Um, and the, the, the main purpose of, of Dragovich and Radnovich was to understand the existence of periodic orbits in such billiards, but it's a very hard question. Uh, but fortunately, uh, Zorich asked a little bit different question, not about periodic orbit, but about equidistribution. So it means about unique ergodicity. And this question uh, have uh, an answer, which is very similar to the situation of the whole orbit. It means that for every nibbled ellipse, uh, for almost every parameter s, uh, the <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the billiard flow restricted to SS, it's uh, uniquely ergodic, and we also know something about the only invariant measure. This is uni uh, equivalent to the measure Lebesgue uh, uh, Lebesgue measure on the on, on the phase space. And what about the proof? The first, the first uh, step is to use a smart change of coordinates, denoted here by sigma s, invented by Dragovich and Radnovich. I mentioned about smart change of coordinates, and this is the same object. And after the smart change of coordinates, we obtain, instead of, 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 of the uh, nibbled ellipse, we obtain um, a polygon with only vertical and horizontal sides. And in the new coordinates, the billard flow, it's isomorphic to the billard flow in the direction P force. Moreover, 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 all the shapes of the billiard tables, polygons, are represented here on this slide. And as you see, all of them are naturally partitioned into staircase polygons. <sighs> OK, ah, the time is over. OK. More, OK. OK, so. Uh, to be a little bit quicker, we pass now through so-called um, un unfolding procedure, whatever it is. Uh, after this unfolding procedure, we obtain, instead of billiard flow on the polygon, we obtain a curve of uh, translation surfaces, uh, depending on S. Uh, which are partitioned, naturally partitioned also by staircase polygons. And uh, the lengths and heights of the steps can be computed by the following two formulas given by uh, known for us uh, elliptic integrals. So it means that we have a precise description of the family X and 
Why? And we are prepared to apply CRM, our criterion CRM. See this application, the, 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 uh, the verification of assumption is not completely easy, but it's doable. And in this way, we obtain unique ergodicity. And finally, I, I will only mention that uh, we also have some applications for so-called impact Hamiltonian systems. So we consider um, the behavior of unique mass particle on the plane uh, for the standard kinetic energy and for the potential energy of this form. And we assume that the vertical or and horizontal uh, potentials are even analytic maps with one minimum at zero. Then we can consider um, uh, the, the, the standard Hamiltonian flow related to this kind of Hamiltonian. But in our situation, we have additional assumption that uh, the particle moves in a bounded polygon room for, for which walls are vertical only and horizontal. More precisely, we consider only um, rooms which uh, are unions of four staircase polygons of this way. And let me quickly uh, pass to the final result, uh, which says something about the behavior of this uh, impact system when we fix the global energy E and we change uh, the vertical energy theta. And in fact, we deal only with the situation when V1 and V2 are squares of uh, convex uh, functions. And for example, if both of them are not quadratic or both of them are quadratic, but not in resonance, then generally we will see a unique, uh, uh, uniquely ergodic behavior of the uh, of our impact um, Hamiltonian flow on level sets. So we have also a result, a series of results about about quadratic uh, potentials uh, which are in resonance, but then the behavior, in fact, it's much more complicated. And in fact, then the criterion C, it's, it's not strong enough to apply it. And I'm done, thank you very much. And happy birthday again, Felix. Are there any questions? Oh yeah, I have a I, I I have two questions. For the theorem A as applications, I saw there's a obstacles in the ellipse. But yeah, 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 yeah. Right can right. the theorem A can be applied for the many obstacles or just one no, obstacle? No, 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 no. So in fact, this situation with one obstacle. This is in fact uh a degenerated case of nibbled, uh, nibbled um, ellipse. So here we have only one monster attacked from, 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 from the top and with very, very, very narrow piece. But nevertheless, this, 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 this uh, linear obstacle it's a um, de uh, degenerate uh, um, a, a hyperbolic arc. So this is in the same uh, framework in the sense. Yes, but so, so okay, but but uh, when we when we uh, ah yeah, well then, well then. ah you're saying okay. So, okay, I, I, I say, uh, I can say, uh, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not sure what's going on because if you have many linear obstacles, 
in fact, uh, this is not a situation which is described but nibbled um, uh, ellipse because you don't have staircase, even, even non-degenerated. And maybe, okay, so theorem one, it's not useful here, but maybe some kind of generalization when we consider um, higher rank covers of the translation toric. This is, this is probably a good direction, I guess. Okay. The next one is for theorem C. Uh, I saw that the flow was rotated by pi over four. Yeah. But is it just for convenience or it, can it be applied like pi over four times multiples of pi over four or any rational? So it, it, in fact, it, in fact, uh, this theorem works for any, any direction different than vertical. Oh, okay, yes. But in fact, if you have a fixed direction different than vertical and horizontal, then you can, uh, you can apply some uh, horror cycle to, 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 to change the direction and in a sense, uh, ah, no, sorry. Uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. You can apply a little bit of Teichmiller flow, which maintains a vertical and horizontal sides. And then you can you can you can change the direction of the motion from any or from any direction which is not vertical and horizontal to pi over four. That that, that it's clear. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there are no further questions, either in the room or maybe online, uh, maybe we could thank the speaker again. There was a coffee break, uh, formally until 10 past, but maybe... No, maybe 20 minutes. Maybe.